Good morning everyone. Um, I've got a new battery charger. Here it is and it's a big one. It's a 24 slot AA or 14500 and AAA battery charger. So I thought I'd fill it up with all my favourite colourful Eneloops. And it's quite possible that that's the last time you'll see the whole thing in one shot because it is just so Big. It's three inches high by 17 inches wide. Now this is uh, just as I say AA's, uh, 14500s and AAA's, but it is multi-chemistry. In fact, probably the best way to show that would be to go into the menu. So I'm going to press and hold that and then we'll go down to battery type and we'll have a look at those a little bit closer. So it does nickel metal hydride, it does nickel cadmium, Eneloop has been singled out. I don't quite know why because the settings are the same as for nickel metal hydride. Uh, lithium ion, it also does nickel zinc. So this uh, type of cell, which I bought a little while ago to solve a battery related problem. Um, a lot of people were saying that these have very small number of cycles before they start to fade, but uh, we shall see. Uh, lithium iron phosphate and also lithium HV, which is nominal 3.8 volts, can be charged up to 4.35. So this battery charger is the ISDT N24. It's one of the N series battery chargers. And uh, this one has been very kindly donated by Banggood.com. There is a link in the description below the video, which takes you to Banggood's website. There are three battery chargers in this series. There's the N8, the N16, and the N24. Now, interestingly, the N8 is USB powered. It has a micro USB socket on the side. These ones do as well, but they also have the uh, 12 volt. In fact, I think it's anywhere from five to 12 volts. And I'm not sure whether you can go much over 12 volts. I haven't tested that yet. I will do. Uh, these ones have an additional power input, of course, because the amount of power that you can put into a full bay of 24 cells, um, let's go for the worst case, which would be lithium. In fact, LIHV would be the worst case. So you're putting maximum 1.5 amps, which is the limit on this charger, into a cell at 4.35 volts times 24. That's a fair amount of power. And that brings me to the first of this battery charger's interesting features. It actually has a power limiter on the input, so it can only actually pull 48 watts, that's assuming you're using 12 volts, through that input socket. And it's adjustable. So if I go into the menu and come down to input power limit, I can set that anywhere between 48 watts and 10 watts. So at the moment I'm running a discharge, I'm discharging all of these 24 Eneloops and I'm doing it at 0.1 amps which is taking forever, it's been running all night and they're still not all discharged. Some of them have finished and the lights go green when the process that you're running has finished and they're this sort of funny yellow colour which I think is made up of the green and the red LED on the circuit board when they're still uh, running. So let's go into the menu again. And uh, there's the task which is on discharge. The tasks available are charge, discharge, activation, which I'm not entirely sure what it is and the manual doesn't really say, and analysis, which I assume will give you a reading for uh, capacity in milliamp hours. So I'm doing a discharge. Let's come down to the current setting. I went slightly too far. And let's up that a little bit. Uh, let's do that at half an amp. And when you discharge 24 cells at half an amp, this thing actually gets really quite warm. So let's go back to the main screen and those should now start to complete. So let's have a look at what we've got on the display. We've got uh, total charge. Uh, in this case, it's showing as a negative because I'm in discharge mode. Now that tells me that cell 15, which is ooh, that green one, has finished and it's down at well it probably went down to 0.9 volts i think 0.9 volts is the minimum for nickel metal high drive or eneloop it's showing nimh i think i set it for nimh actually i could set it for eneloop in fact let's do that i don't think it'll make much difference press and hold that battery type 
And there's no auto setting here because you only get the auto setting on charge. Let's bring it down to Anna loop. Now, will I actually start the process all over again? Yes, the lights went out and they've come back on. So it's actually starting the process from the beginning and all my milliamp hour counters have reset. <laughs> oh dear. So total accumulated charge in milliamp hours, negative if discharging, uh, a percentage state of charge indicator, although it's not really a, oh, that's lots of cells completing their discharge. Um, it's not really a state of charge indicator and it's not showing on cells that have finished. So let's go to one that hasn't finished. It's um, more of a voltage indicator, I think. Uh, total elapsed time. This is the voltage on the cell. That one's very close to completing. This is the current. And although I told it to do a discharge at half an amp, um, that one had actually wound down to a lower value. They're all completing now. Let's go to that one, which is at 50 something percent. Uh, okay, so that one's on minus half an amp. So it's discharging at half an amp. But the ones that are pretty close to the end, like this one on 1%, it's wound the current down to a figure less than what I set. So it looks to me like the algorithm is trying to squeeze out every last drop of juice from these cells by winding the current down once it gets to 0.9 volts. I think that's how it's working. We've got the temperature of each cell. Now, am I to believe that there are 24 temperature sensors in here? Hard to say. And it also doesn't seem to be the temperature of the cell as much as the temperature of the electronics underneath the cell. That's just an impression I get. You get a little graph, but of course the graph has no numbers on it. So it's not, it's not providing data. It's just providing a sort of impression of what's going on. Here is the mode, it's in discharge mode, and I want to discharge at half an amp. As I say, that seems to be overridden by the algorithm when it gets close to the end of the uh, task. This is the voltage of the uh, incoming power supply, it's 12.3 volts. This is the supplied uh, power brick, which I'm actually put in the mains. I just don't think my solar system would cope with this amount of charging at the moment. And this is my power limit, which I've set to 36 watts. Right, now let's, let's look now at some of the other things which I've noticed about this charger. Let's actually go into the menu and switch it to the charge mode. So we'll go to charge and I'll pick the battery type. Yeah, that could be, well, no, actually the battery type I'm gonna pick as auto. This seems to be the only place where it does an auto uh, detection of battery type, but it does say in the manual that it only really detects uh, lithium and nickel metal hydride. It does specifically say that it will not auto detect nickel zinc. Let me take all these batteries out and I'll put a variety of cells in there and we'll see what it does. They're quite um, difficult to get out these cells. So I've actually taken to using a lolly stick. Now you could pull it out by the negative side, but I find that the spring terminal scuffs the plastic wrapper so I don't like doing that. I like to actually lift the cell out from under the little lip on the positive side. Let's do that. I've, t I've taken to using this lolly stick, which I've crushed one end so it's a bit uh, thinner and lift them out like this. So press it in and lift them out. But these positive terminals are quite deeply recessed inside. I think this is a plastic housing or is that metal? Quite deeply recessed. And that does actually have an implication for the flat top lithiums. And that's why that little piece of wire is there. I'll show you what that's all about in a moment. So I've set it to do a half amp charge with auto battery type detection. So let's put in an inner loop as the first cell and it detects that as a nickel metal hydride. Let's now put in this uh, lithium ion 14500 IMR EFEST cell, and it doesn't detect that at all. And that's because the flat top simply doesn't connect with the uh, quite uh, deeply recessed positive terminal. So yes, that is a bit of an issue and uh, it's relatively easily solved. You could drop something down in there, possibly even something like a magnet, a small neodymium would bridge that gap. But I made up this little loop of wire. So I'll just drop that down in there. 
the little gap in there doesn't seem to be a gap where something would get lost and then it works absolutely fine that detects it as a lithium ion so it sees it as 4.17 volts oh that one's reasonably fully charged now let's try the nickel zinc here's a nickel zinc if i put that in it says it's a nickel zinc it says it's a nickel metal hydride but there's an exclamation mark at the end so it's saying that looks like a nickel metal hydride but it's 1.69 volts so i'm not entirely sure uh, that i'm happy with that and it actually says i've completed the task of charging it now the manual does say that you have to specifically set the machine to the chemistry for nickel zinc and specifically set it to the chemistry for lithium ion high voltage now the problem is now if i set this to the chemistry for nickel zinc it'll charge my inner loop as though it were a nickel zinc and it'll take it up to potentially 1.9 volts so if you're charging nickel zinc you can only charge nickel zinc if you're charging just nickel metal hydrides and lithiums you can mix them in the machine one chemistry i'm not sure about is lithium ion phosphate the manual doesn't specifically say whether it will auto detect it um, and it also doesn't say that you have to specifically set the chemistry for lithium ion phosphate so i've ordered some but i don't yet know what this is going to make of the 3.2 volt lithium ion phosphates uh, let's put in another cell i'll put in this small our triple a loop, which i should be able to get in there yes it sees that as a nickel metal hydride there is another screen if you just hit this middle button you get an indicator it doesn't tell you much but it does tell you uh, the percentage uh, state of charge or voltage whichever way you interpret it for all 24 slots it doesn't stay on that permanently it tells you which ones have completed the task and which ones are still running the task and also of course which ones are empty so let's take these cells out all but the nickel zinc and i'll show you the process for charging a chemistry which it doesn't support in its auto mode so i'm just going to charge nickel zinc so i need to press and hold this button go down to battery type and specifically select nickel zinc have to make sure now that only nickel zincs are in the machine and the manual does warn you if you have the wrong battery type in the machine you could destroy the batteries the charger or indeed your house so let's uh, enter that come down to go back and go back i'll find my other nickel zinc right here it is so i'll put the other nickel zinc in there oh that's the one with my piece of bent wire so perhaps i'll put it in that slot and that will charge these nickel zincs using the proper nickel zinc profile which i think takes them up to 1.9 volts at half an amp uh, of course you also get a milliohms reading and most chargers that give you an internal resistance reading seem to only do it once i think this charger might update that it's very slow it takes several minutes but i have seen that change during a charge cycle so now i can flick between the data for these two cells so in slot 22 we've got 243 milliohms in slot 24 241 milliohms and so that is my first look at the isdt n24 24 slot aa and aaa and 14500 battery charger perfect if you've got a lot of aa cells to charge cheerio